The day after this video goes live, Xenoblade Chronicles X will be four years old in Japan. It wouldn't get released until December of 2015 in the US, which is kind of BS because the Treehouse claimed that they were localizing it for a worldwide release, but kind of completely failed that, and I ended up getting spoiled in the meantime. But anyway, it didn't sell as well as Xenoblade 2 would two years later, or even as much as the original game had despite its wacky release. But it maintains a cult following of people who still play it even today. I know that most people who are fans of this channel found it because of my Xenoblade 2 videos, so today I'm going to try and convince you to give X a try. If you're an older fan who's already played it, or a newer fan who's gotten to it before me, then it's your job to back me up in the comments. Keep in mind though, there is no Switch port confirmed yet, or even an official announcement that they are actually making one. The last thing we've gotten was the director of the game saying, I would like it to happen, but we can't right now. So, you will need a Wii U with a functioning gamepad in order to play it. That's not too bad of a thing, though, because Xenoblade 1 is a 20 US dollar download on the Wii U eShop, and you can get a physical copy of X for under 25 in plenty of places online, which means you can get two very long JRPGs, the best Wii game and the best Wii U game, and all of the Xenoblade games before, too, for less than the price of a new, modern AAA title. So, I'd say it's worth hanging on to your last-gen system for just a little longer, if you are one of those new Xenoblade fans. Also, of course, it's okay if you don't have a Wii U, or you want to try and wait and hold out for a Switch port. This video is to try and get the new two fans who've played it and maybe one. One is a lot closer to two, so it's a much easier sell, and I don't really need to do much to convince you to play it. I just want to convince you people to give X a try when you next get a chance, because a lot of people dislike X for not being something it was never trying to be at all, and I feel like if you try it with an open mind, with my recommendation, and with the recommendation of all the people in the comments who are going to tell you to play X, hopefully you'll enjoy it just as much as the rest of us do, although I'm like the only person in the world who likes all the Xenoblade games equally, so that's probably a very tall order. With that out of the way though, here are a few reasons why you should play Xenoblade Chronicles X. Number 1. The World! Mira is by far the biggest selling point of the game and still remains a triumph in open world game design. It is also a full sci-fi world instead of the science fantasy the other Xenoblade games give you, so if you want some of that slightly more xenosaga e feel, or are just looking for something different than fantasy JRPG, then we've got you covered here. Like I just mentioned, it's also a very big open world even by today's standards. It's bigger than 1 and 2's worlds put together, I believe, plus it doesn't have loading screens. If you fast travel, yeah, there's going to be a bit of a load time, but if you're just walking around to everywhere, it's completely seamless all the way, even transitions between the five continents of Mira, which is kind of ridiculous. There's one loading screen in the overworld in its entirety, and that's just getting from the rest of the world to your home base. So I'd say that's still pretty good. X is also a much more exploration-focused game than 2, but that doesn't matter because not only is the world so much bigger, so there's more stuff to explore, but it's far more interesting. For the most part, 2 does stick with relatively realistic area designs, with the exception of the Cloud Sea stuff and a few certain sci-fi elements, but X is an alien planet. The words, a whole different planet, are in the battle theme for a reason. That's because it is alien. Everything about Mira is alien, and the further along you get in the game, the more you realize that, and the more it shows in the environment design and in the creature design. A lot of the enemies, you just want to sit there and take a look at, just chill and say, hey, that's a cool looking thing. You don't even want to fight half these things because they just look cool. And if you read the bestiary entries, there's even more info that explains how each creature fits into the Mirren ecosystem. The world building here is also by far the best in the series. And all of this is helped by the fact that the environment design, not talking about character models, 2 definitely has those better, but the environment design, the way the world looks, is also at its best in X. And really, a reason for a Switch port is just seeing all of that in 1080 instead of 720. I honestly can't even put into words how amazing of an environment Mira is to explore, but suffice to say, the secret areas and getting to discover all those are some of the highlights 
of the series for me over some probably even important story scenes. And of course, the world building is accentuated by the people who inhabit it, which leads us to number two, the characters. I am not going to use this voice for any future numbers because it sounds really disingenuous, even though I actually love this game to bits. X is not a story-driven game, but all of its characters do get their chance to shine. Side quests are far more important than any other game in the series, and I would hesitate to call them side quests and just refer to them as missions like the game itself does, because these missions, as well as exploring the planet, are for the most part the biggest part of the game. It might seem like, oh, this is a story light game where the story isn't given too much importance, so what about the party members? They don't, they don't really get anything. In the other games, everyone gets a bunch of character development throughout the story and maybe a bit of extra stuff and some side content, but are these characters not well fleshed out? The answer to that is, they are in fact fleshed out. There are 18 party members in the game, including your avatar. Your avatar is silent outside of combat, and all you can really do is choose a few dialogue options from them, so they're not a defined character themselves, but of course, you could project whatever you want into them since they are a blank slate avatar, but the other 17 playable party members, and yes, you can actually switch to play as someone other than your avatar if they're in your party, you just can't take the avatar out. Not many people know that for some reason, even once you beat the game, I don't know how that happened. But they all get at least two missions directly tied into them. And with one exception, all of them get two fully voiced missions about them. Some of them even get three, and that includes the ones that are important in the story. There are basically seven important story party members who are ones you automatically get, and the rest are technically optional. And some of those missions, basically the precursor to Blade Quests, if you play two, are required, but only the ones for the story required characters, and besides that, every other time you're just going out to learn more about this person yourself and just find stuff out. The real story of the game isn't the main story or the things in the main story missions. Those are important and those have a big effect on the world, but in general the story of X is the story of all of humanity doing their thing, doing their best to survive, as well as that of maybe some non-human allies you might meet along the way. I'm trying to keep this relatively spoiler free, and by relatively I mean entirely spoiler free. And you get to see that through the eyes of all different kinds of people. Not just your party members, who themselves are all very different because they have different backgrounds from Earth and have different roles in Blade, the organization you're all part of, but also through all the NPCs. There are not very many quest chains in Xenoblade 2, and while 1 has plenty and a lot of them are very good, X's again take the cake, because there are a bunch of huge interlocking stories tying huge amounts of NPCs together that might span the entire game and then some. There's a lot of stuff to the world and characters of X, and it's definitely one of the high points. Number three, the pacing. This is a bit of a weird thing to bring up, but X has kind of the objectively best pacing in the series. Other games do the usual JRPG thing of having huge cutscene breaks with almost no gameplay for long stretches of time, possibly an hour plus. But X avoids this because of the mission structure. It's a very destructured game, but when there is structure, it's all very rigid and everything falls under it. Everything you do besides just going out and exploring the world is some type of mission, even completing the main story. It's divided up into 12 chapters, and all of those are just 12 different missions that happen to be the longest and the most involved. So, you make your own pacing. For the first couple hours, you are pretty much stuck in tutorial and cutscene limbo, but after the maybe two and a half to three hour mark, once you're able to start taking regular missions and explore, you make the pacing. You choose when to do what and when things get done. There are certain requirements in order to access new story chapters, but as long as you just kind of do some missions and naturally explore in the areas the chapters you've taken on get you to, you should pretty much be okay even level-wise with the possible exception of the final boss, but it's the final boss that's supposed to be hard. So there is really no way to complain about the pacing of the game, especially because even the longer story missions never take more than like an hour and a half to do at most, including all the cutscenes. So it's very conducive to shorter play sessions and making the game into exactly what you want out of it. Which, as an aside, this actually makes X a much more handheld friendly game than 2 because of the shorter mission structure and even the most involved story segments being less than 2 hours. So, 
X is a better fit for the Switch than 2. Just, just a little food for thought. Which brings us to number 4, the combat. I've talked a lot about sort of non-gameplay related stuff like story things, character interactions, and pacing. While those are all gameplay related, they're not gameplay itself. And the only real gameplay thing I said was, it's a fantastic open world that feels amazing to go out and explore. But this is a video game, and I would like to stress that the most important part of video games is always the gameplay, and when you're doing an RPG, the most important thing is the battle system. And I'm happy to say that X's does not disappoint. Its system is a lot closer to 1's than 2's, but still as fast and involved as 2's, for the most part. X is also the hardest game in the series, besides maybe 2 on some higher level custom difficulties. Combat here is very fast paced and built on the TP system instead of the party gauge chain attack one like the other games have, so it's a completely different infrastructure, but you're still auto attacking and using arts that are on cooldown, so there's a lot different, but there is still a lot that's the same. There's also the unique wrinkle of there being no good healing arts. If you want to recover HP, first off, you should not take damage, but also you have to rely on the soul voice system, which is a way for you to coordinate with your AI party members to do things more than just break and then topple, break and then topple over and over again. In the soul voice system, certain characters, when a certain condition happens in battle, will call out a soul voice, which is basically asking for a specific art color. There are colors for physical attack, ranged attack, buff, debuff, aura, the usual kind of thing. And if anyone on the field uses an art of that color, then everyone will regain a little bit of HP, and another certain good effect will happen related to that soul voice. You can even customize them. I've never found that necessary. There are a lot of good things you can get out of them, and it is actually your primary way of recovering HP, as well as certain B-button QTEs, which show up basically the same way they do in the other games, but this time they also recover health. It's also got the secondary cooldown system, which lets you charge up arts for even more potent effects, and plays into the fact that you can wield a melee and ranged weapon at the same time and swap between them with the press of the button, not even with a cooldown like swapping blades in two. You also learn arts for different weapons separately and can mix and match them as you see fit. There's also a skill learning system that's tied to your class level, and yes, there's actually a class system in this game. Only your avatar can access the full class tree, but every other party member does fall into a class and can gain class levels and learn new arts and skills based off of that. So you've got skills that are class specific, you've got arts that are class specific, you've got weapons that are class specific, and when you max out a class tree, you can use that class's weapons while in any other class, so you can gain benefits, arts, and skills from other classes, and once you're done maxing everything out, combine them to make the best character you want to. There's also the best gear system in the series. You have more gear slots on your character than in any other game, and the augment system is basically the same thing as aux cores and then gems in the other games, so there's all of that. There's also fashion gear, which means you can choose a set of gear that will always show up on you, so your huge weird Frankenstein thing of other gear to get your stats good doesn't have to be what you stare at while you're playing the game. There's a bunch of cool stuff. And then there is the overdrive mechanic, which you get partway through the story, that basically can turn your RPG character into a hack and slash character if you optimize it hard enough. It's one of the most fun things to get to control and one of the most rewarding to finally master. And yes, X's combat is very good. It's up to par with the other games in the series by far, and you also get to fight a few more interesting enemies that none of the other games give you access to. 1 and 2 share a lot of the same enemies, but for the most part, X's are all completely unique. And that's another cool thing, because there's also things like new status conditions that the other games don't have, and new things the enemies can do. There's even an elemental system in X before there was one and two. It's not as important, but there are still elemental weaknesses and resistances that you can stack and exploit. There's a lot to the combat in X, it's probably the hardest to master, but because of that, it's also the most rewarding and easily ranks among the most fun right up there with Torna's. Another mostly gameplay, but also pretty story important thing, is the skills. Which, 
it's a giant mech that you get to control. I don't really need to say much more other than that's what it is. You should already be invested in this because it's a cool concept. And X pulls it off very well for the most part. But the most interesting part of the skills are not that you have to wait to some point in the story to unlock them. That at least makes a bunch of sense. But the fact that before you get them, you're not really missing them. It's hard to realize, oh wait, I'm like a day into this game and I haven't even gotten the scale yet. There's just so much to do before then. But once you get it, it's like the world just opened up to you a second time. You think you're done exploring everything you can easily on foot and then bam, hey, you get a mech. You can jump higher, you can move faster, you can explore more efficiently, find new things, take on new foes. Then you think you're done with that? Well, guess what? Now your mech can fly. You could go literally anywhere in the world you so choose, take on any foe, do anything, and it's just pretty damn incredible. Also, uh, if you're a fan of some of the older games, this is the only Xenoblade game to let you actively pilot the mechs like Gears and Saga did. One, you never even had a mech on your side, really. And two, Siren is a cutscene power beside Sacred Arrow, and even then, you're not in it. So this is, in some regards, the closest to the roots of the Xeno games of old, gameplay-wise, although I'd have to say, two probably hits a few more marks in terms of the overall story and meta myth behind it. The only real drawback to the scales is the fact that combat while using them is a lot worse than it is on foot. I don't mean worse in terms of your overall effectiveness, but in terms of how fun it is to do. Because scales can't do secondary cooldowns, their arts are all tied to what gear is equipped to it, so you have to buy with money more gear, which isn't too hard because you could get very large amounts of money very quickly, but it's also very slow and deliberate like, like you'd expect large mechs to do, which means your arts have very long cooldowns, and without secondary cooldowns and other more interesting things, you're left basically with a slowed down version of the Xenoblade 1 battle system instead of X's battle system with all the bells, whistles, and cool fast stuff that makes it play so much better than 1 did. So, it's a big, big step back, and I'd say the x scale combat is actually the worst type of combat in the entire series, unfortunately, but skills, for the most part, are an exploration tool, and you can beat every enemy in the game on foot if you optimize your builds hard enough, and there are even several story fights that force you to take them on on foot, so you are required to up your ground game throughout the entire game and can't just rely on your skills to do everything. Speaking of battle, I guess, although this is kind of a ubiquitous thing for the entire game, X's soundtrack is also a lot better than you probably think. You hear people complaining about the NLA Night theme or Black Tar, and then, oh, guess the entire soundtrack is bad. Well, guess what? The entire thing was composed by Hiroyuki Sawano, so I don't really know how people are getting away with saying it's bad and, like, living and stuff. Because, for the most part, it lives up to the name of the composer and the soundtracks of the other games. It's a different type of game with a different tone, so of course, there's a very different style of music at play, as opposed to 1, 2, and Torna, but it's good, and it fits all the stuff that's different in X compared to those other games. So, it's just an apple and orange thing. If you're expecting the best music of Ace Plus in a game not composed by Ace Plus, you're just kind of looking in the exact wrong place. That being said though, the area themes are all great and encompass the grandeur that is Mira. Most of the battle themes are very, very good. Uncontrollable is of course my favorite song in the series and definitely deserves its own video at some point. I'll get to that eventually, I, I swear. And almost all of the cutscene songs are also incredible. Seriously, just listen to the soundtrack, judge for yourself, it's going to be just as good as that from the other games, so do that, and then you definitely want to listen to your game audio while playing through X, because yeah, the voice acting isn't anything amazing, it's no new pinnacle, but it is certainly competently done, and there are plenty of fun character interactions that you can get in battle that you definitely want to hear at least once, not just in the cutscenes. With that, though, we have to move on to the last thing before the outro, and that is the negatives, question mark? X is a different style of game. It's a lot more open-world JRPG than open-world JRPG, if you know what I mean. 
That being said, though, it still feels like a Xenoblade game. It has plenty of similar themes, plenty of similar gameplay, and plenty of similar stuff you could do that definitely makes it belong in the series. It is technically a spin-off now that there's a Xenoblade 2 to follow Xenoblade 1, but it's basically just two series going in parallel, but X has gotten its sequel. Yet. It also might be too hard at the beginning for people coming from 2, because 2 is definitely the easiest Xenoblade game, and most people probably played it on normal difficulty their first playthrough. X has one difficulty, and it can get pretty rough to get into at the beginning, but... Eh. Like, you get better tutorials than you do in 2 as well, so if you just pay attention to them, you should be okay, but I could see people getting annoyed that there's a lot more deaths early on. You've probably also heard some horror stories about how bad a character Tatsu is, and I'm ashamed to say that yes, they are true for the most part, but he isn't in as much of the game as you might fear. Not only does he not show up until after the first big blast of cutscenes at the middle, but he's also almost exclusively in main story or main story required missions, which, keep in mind, probably isn't even the majority of cutscenes. So, while he's bad, he's only in the main story, which is something I keep stressing isn't the biggest and most important thing of the game. So if anything, he's more of just kind of a side annoyance that isn't actually that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, and people only like to meme him up because, first off, the jokes people make about him are much funnier than he is himself, and also because there aren't actually very many things you can criticize X on, so people who like to take digs at the game just take whatever chance they can get. Also, the Avatar obviously isn't going to be as good a protagonist as everyone from the other games, and Elma doesn't get as much screen time as Shulk, as Rex and the Aegis, as Laura and Jin and all them, just because the main story is shorter, but that doesn't make her not a good character, and she still gets plenty of moments and plenty of things that are explored. Although, there's a lot of stuff that isn't explored because X had a huge shakeup midway through development and a lot of ideas had to get scrapped, despite things that happened that would have been in the other version of the game still being canon and still being alluded to, so there's a lot of unexplained mysteries that go unexplained and without a sequel, we're not getting any closure on that, including a very, very bad and very annoying cliffhanger at the ending, but of course, besides that, the story is good, all of the side stories are good, all of the mission stories are good, everything else is great, it's just that one thing. It can also be a pretty grindy game for late game and post game stuff, you'll need to kill certain enemies a couple hundred times to get the best gear, but there is a shortcut around that if you do the multiplayer stuff, which I didn't even touch on because it's mostly dead, but you and a couple friends pick up the game at the same time, you do multiplayer things together, wow, there you go. So yes, the online community is also very small, so you're probably not going to get any of the big multiplayer raids or anything done anytime soon, but there are still people out there, there are still probably Discord servers you could go and find, and eventually you could even get a group going. People are going to criticize X and think it's bad, and these, besides people who have like legitimate criticisms about it, are mostly people who have played 1 or 1 and 2 and are mad because it's not like those games. There's a reason why X is not in the same series technically as 1 and 2, because it's a different style of game. It's not trying to be, or rather, when it first came out, it was not trying to be Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It was going to be a successor to 1, carrying over a lot of similar elements and gameplay and references and stuff, but it wasn't trying to be a direct sequel. It is its own thing, and expecting it to be like the other Xenoblade games is just setting yourself up for disappointment. Which is why I say most criticisms of X are invalid, because most of the criticisms are Oh, this wasn't what I expected, so it's automatically bad, because I only like one thing and I'm not willing to try out new things. But if you try out X, I'm sure you'll find something to love, just like I and so many other people did. So hopefully, when next you get the chance, you dive into the experience and explore this whole different planet for yourself. With that, though, we are done here. Thank each and every one of you for watching, especially those of you who've, like, actually played X already and were just kind of sitting there listening to me tell you things you already knew, because I appreciate that all you were doing with that was just supporting the channel, and honestly, I can't thank you enough. But, yeah, I don't really have too much else to say. This is the last video in April, 
I got a bunch of bad finals next week, so I'm not really sure how good or how long next Sunday's video will be. But it's gonna happen at some point, and I'll try to get at least one Xenobytes out in the middle then, too. Second channel is coming soon. I'm having a bit of issue with Patreon actually letting me withdraw the money I've been given so far. So once I get the payment from the April stuff, like that money, add it to my account, I'm going to resolve that, get the money out, and then start ordering the things I need to play Xenogears. So the second channel with Let's Plays, with the Golden Sun streams, with the Xenogears stuff, or the Xenogears gameplay, and then new Xenogears content is going to be coming soon, and I'm pretty close to making it happen. I got a two-week break before I have to go back to school, and I'm going to try to get as much stuff as I possibly can to bring back up to college with me and start that stuff going. But speaking of patrons, I, of course, have to thank everyone who pledged any amount of money because you are making Xenogears a reality, and we're going to hit Xenosaga pretty soon if people keep up like this. And of course, a special thanks to $25 patrons Barracks and Lily Starflame, as well as $10 patrons Dead Pat and Newbie Jenkles. So thanks to all of you, all of you who are on the screen, and I didn't say, and everyone else. But until next time, though, this is Luxon, signing off.